In this video, we'll be talking about the concepts behind enhancer and eukaryotic gene expression regulation. So let us try to understand what are enhancers. So this is a gene body. This is the promoter and enhancer is also a DNA sequence that could be present in an upstream or a downstream location. In this case, it is downstream with respect to the promoter or the transcription start site. Now the enhancer at a molecular level is just a segment of DNA which has the capability to control and influence the transcriptional output from the main gene body. So that is why enhancer is one type of cis regulatory element. So RNA pol 2 is recruited to the promoter and the transcription start side RNA pol 2 do the transcription. But the activity of RNA pol 2 is highly modulated by these enhancer elements. And there is a middleman which coordinate between the promoter, enhancer and the RNA pol 2 mediated transcription. And these middlemen are known as mediator complexes. So they link the enhancer to the promoter. Now here is the overall view where we can see in the promoter there are set of transcription factors which are recruited. These are known as the generalized transcription factor and they are most essential. They are the bare minimum to start the process of transcription. Now alongside these generalized transcription factors there could be specialized transcription factors which get recruited into specialized location like any enhancer and they can stimulate and influence the rate of gene expression so this concept is really important the way enhancer perform its job is via the specialized transcription factors and the mediator complex question is where is enhancer located Enhancer could be located in all possible regions. It could be upstream to a gene, downstream to a gene. It could be also within the gene, within the uh, intronic region of another gene. So enhancer and the promoter come in close proximity due to the looping of the DNA. So we have to understand the concept behind 3D chromatin to understand the enhan enhancer and promoter interaction and how does that alter gene expression. So right now we are looking at the nucleus where we, ca we can expect there is a 3D organization of the entire genome. And in the genome, the DNA is not alone. The DNA is wrapped around the histone. So we have to have a nucleosome centric view in our mind so everything inside the nucleus is actually some sort of nucleosome and one part of that nucleosome might contribute for a gene and the promoter has to be accessed by the transcription factors polymerase for the initiation of the transcription so nucleosomes can possibly act like roadblock and they have to be shifted, moved, evicted and rebuilt in order to do the process of gene expression. And that's not trivial, right? So here is a promoter. In this case, you can see it's tightly wrapping around the nucleosome. So it's not accessible to many of the transcriptional machinery. So what could happen? So there are ways by which a cell can take out some part of the uh, nucleosome or slide the nucleosome away from the promoter and thereby they can possibly um, get the accessibility. So transcription factors coordinate with con uh, co complexes like nucleosome remodeling complexes which can alter the entire nucleosome. Now why we are talking about it because accessibility matters in terms of transcription. Now let's think about the accessibility in the enhancer region in order for specialized transcription factor to bind also enhancer region need to be accessible so always there is a coordination between nucleosome remodeling complex transcription factors and different cis regulatory elements so if nucleosome remodeling complex does not make the enhancer uh, basically accessible then how would these particular uh, complexes can sit not only that, these transcription factors 
which are specialized ones after sitting into the enhancer region creates an enhancer promoter loop that we can see here and this is basically a huge loop comprising several nucleosomes they also recruit several uh, histone modifiers and other enzymes such as histone acetyl transferase which can alter the architecture of the nucleosome by changing the histone and um, the dna interaction so right now we can see due to acetylation there are accessible domain which has uh, come out and now transcription can be start now there is a concept called enhancer modularity remember the enhancer sequence is present in the dna and that sequence of an enhancer is same between two different cell types maybe a brain cell maybe a cell of the hand but how does different gene expression output is expected from the same sequence it's not only about the sequence it's about what interacts with the sequence so see these two images on the top one there are two enhancers e1 and e2 right now due to a brain specific transcription factor which is depicted in blue interacts with the enhancer one and allow the output of the gene a to a particular degree and this is now brain specific output but you can also think there could be a limb specific output hypothetically and there are transcription factor which is the green transcription factor which is choosing the enhancer element 2 and having a complete different output of that particular enhancer so this is known as the modularity of the enhancer so moral of the story enhancer is just a dna element it's quite sim similar it, it's quite similar between different cell types but the output of the enhancer, the influence of the enhancer on a different gene body is totally governed by the things that are bound to the enhancer or interacting. The way enhancer interact with the promoter and the uh, polymerase, that governs the output of enhancer. Now, since we understand the concept of enhancer, question is how to understand whether a sequence is actually enhancer or not. So imagine you have a gene body. How would you know which sequence upstream or downstream to it is an enhancer? Is this the enhancer or that the enhancer? So how to understand that? And the answer is diverse. Because people used to understand or look at enhancer in different ways in past. And now they are doing it in a different way with the help of high throughput techniques. So imagine this is an enhancer trap construct. Here you would have a minimal promoter shown in red. That means this promoter is not strong enough to drive transcription. But you would have a reporter, most likely GFP or some sort of like other reporter. And there would be a region of interest that you can clone. Now this region of interest could be different. You could have different different fragments of the DNA that is present upstream of a gene. Uh, so you can clone this in this particular construct. Now, generally, the minimal promoter is not capable of doing the transcription. Now, if you put this element and see an augmentation of the transcription, so possibly that region of interest might be an enhancer. So the GFP expression and degree of GFP expression or the reporter expression is a readout for your enhancer activity. Also, one can think that you can clone that in a transposon based vector and basically inject it into a developing mouse embryo and different different mouse line would be generated and wherever the gene would be expressed it would be highlighting that particular region in in terms of fluorescence and this is how one can understand where this enhancer is activated or where this enhancer is active in this case the enhancer is activated in the brain and the spinal cord so this was known as the classical enhancer trap experiment that people used to do. This leads to the discovery of many, many important uh, enhancers in context of development and cell biology. Now, let's talk about the chromatin immunoprecipitation followed by sequencing. So here is two particular scenario. Maybe there is one enhancer that is very specific to a particular transcription factor and that lead to a gene expression. But there could be also bunch of enhancers present in different location of the genome bound by different transcription factor so one can ask okay if i know a transcription factor and it is supposed to bind to an enhancer element so where does these enhancer element located so one can pull down this particular uh, set of the chromatin and perform a chip sequencing 
you, I have a different video on chip sequencing which is much more detailed. You can get it in the I button. But anyway, after you have pulled down the chromatin, one can look at the segments or the DNA segments that came along with the bound histones or the bound chromatin and then with the sequencing one can understand that where does these sequence fragment align with respect to a genome and the abundance of these fragments depicted as a peak would tell us this region might be the binding site of this transcription factor X. Then we question where do you see this site? In an entire genome. So in this case you can see there are different different genes named as gene A, B, C, D to gene N and you can see the transcription factor is bound to gene A, D and E. Not only you can say that they are bound to these transcription factors you can also highlight that where does this peak is located. For example whether it is located to the upstream or downstream. For example look at gene E and D can you see a particular peak which is located upstream to the gene uh, E but within somewhere in the gene D? So that might be an enhancer. So this is how one can get an understanding of enhancer elements in a high throughput fashion. Now it's also important to understand the concept of 3D chromatin in terms of enhancer. So the enhancer promoter element interaction is dynamic. Imagine there are two particular regions marked here in yellow. So you can have this kind of like A and B regions coming close to each other in time T0. They might also separate far apart in time T1. The moment they interact, the way they interact, all these things ensure how the gene expression regulation would be. So it's all a time dependent phenomena. So right now in T0, C and D are far apart. But in T1, C and D are close. So obviously the output of transcription is dynamic and changing over time. That we have to understand. Also very distant location which might be two different genetic locations can come close in a 3D space. They might be very far apart in a linear space. But in a 3D orientation they could come close. And this is how they can interact with each other dynamically to regulate the gene expression. So I hope this video was useful. Um, let me tell you that these concepts are known as 3D chromatin confirmation capture. This is how you can build up high C contact maps to locate enhancer promoter interactions all over the genome simultaneously. This is a recently developed technique so it's very high throughput. Now altogether I can say that depending upon what type of enhancer promoter and transcription factor elements are chosen a self cellular fate can be determined. For example, a cell might have a fate 1 which is epithelial or fate 2 which is neuronal and that is totally governed by different set of transcription factors, different set of uh, enhancer elements and how these enhancer elements are interacting with basically different genomic location. So we learned three important things. A there could be enhancer modularity. They can also act in permutation and combination. They act with coordination with the transcription factors, the specialized one. And lastly, we looked at they also interact with the nucleosome remodeling factor to regulate eukaryotic gene expression regulation. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.